Welcome to the Mighty Emotions Podcast. I'm your host, Giselle. I'm a certified emotions coach, and I teach you how to respond better to your emotions so you can feel better in your life. My mission is to show you how to work with your emotions to become more emotionally resilient. Your emotions are not designed to overpower you. They're designed to empower you. On this podcast, I share what our emotions are, how to understand them and work with them, and the tools you need to reclaim your power and get unstuck from emotional pain so you can find fulfillment in your life again. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into the episode. Okay, we are back for another episode. Hello, beautiful soul. How are you? How has your year started off? How are you feeling? Right? That's a what are you feeling is the question that I like to ask here in Mighty Emotions because it's so important that we can acknowledge and recognize what we're feeling and not just how, right? When we talk about feeling, how is like the state of feeling. So, like an anxious state, an overwhelmed state, it's more so vague. But when you say, what are you feeling? It's a lot more specific. And so, get into that practice of saying, you know, what are you feeling? How are you, not just how are you feeling, but what are you feeling? What's coming up for you? What's showing up for you? And I genuinely want to know, what are you feeling? I am feeling absolute bliss and just such incredible gratitude. I am celebrating five years of marriage with my husband. And anyone that thinks marriage is a walk in the park, I mean, there are two humans coming together. I'm, I'm sorry, that's never going to be a walk in the park. But it is, I'm so, so, so grateful that we have gotten to where we have gotten and that I just, we both are so more connected than ever, right? And um, we were reflecting on, you know, we were talking to each other about our marriage and where we've come from and what we've gone through. Um, I might do that on another episode maybe, but long story short, you know, he was, he was reflecting back to me that you know, being with me has made him better in all these ways. And I was reflecting how he's made me better in all these ways. Um, And it's just so beautiful to be here. You know, he was the first person to love me unconditionally. And I will say that I believe strongly that that's a result of me meeting him at a time when I loved myself unconditionally. And I was practicing that self-love And that allowed me to attract a relationship like the one that I have. And it has not been the smoothest of sailing. And so to be here five years later, to to have gone through everything we've gone through together and to just want to be together and grow together and stay more connected than ever, I'm really, really grateful. So I'll definitely do future episodes like, you know, sharing what I've learned in a relationship. You know, we've been together for seven and a half years we were long distance for the first bit of our, so there's a lot that I can share that has helped me grow, even in my emotional resilience practice, because a lot of, a lot of reactivity has happened. I was triggered a lot early on and I really depended on this practice and the system and the support that I had around me to move through that. And so don't ever think that a couple is just an island. Like it really takes a village, not just for kids, but for any relationship, it takes a network and a web of support. Um, So I'm really grateful for everyone who supported us in getting here and everyone who's going to be on the journey with us as we move forward. And I share that because I feel incredible, not just because of our marriage, (laughs) which is amazing, but I feel incredible because we decided to spend a day getting a massage and like, you know, jacuzzi time and just so good to give myself that care and my masseuse, shout out to Samantha, magical hands. Okay. Matt, I was putty in her hands. And I think that my, by practicing emotional resilience, I have, it's going to sound crazy, but by practicing emotional resilience, I'll explain in a second. I've been able to really lean into getting a massage. You know, I come from a lot of trauma, especially physical abuse, sexual abuse. So having somebody touch me, was really triggering for me physiologically. Even if mentally I knew I was getting a massage, it's supposed to be relaxing. There's no supposed to be, right? That's what we learn by doing this practice. There's no one way we should be feeling like, oh, it's a massage. You should like it. 
everyone has different stories that they're working through, different experiences that have left them with scars. And so for a long time, I mean, I've gone for massages before and it's always been challenging to relax fully having somebody touch me. Samantha, I will be seeing her more. I, you know, I've got into a place now where I've healed that and I know how to connect with my body. That's what, that's what I mean by emotional resilience. My practice has helped me. It's like, I can really connect to my body, get out of my mind and into my body. And by doing that, allowing the energy to flow. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode. You know, it's about how to take charge of your emotional health this year in 2023. And we always focus, you know, the new year, new me, we get back into fitness. My husband's back on his fitness game where it wants to work out five days a week. You go, boy, like do what you do what you want to do. And yet we neglect our emotional fitness, our emotional wellness, our emotional health, which is so important because that can make or break whether we get the other goals met, right? So how to take charge of this emotional health? It starts with connecting to the physical body. And it starts with being able to separate from the story so often, so often. And there will be more episodes on this. I see people describing their feeling in the how sense, in the state of how they're feeling. I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling stressed, like I said earlier, and not really tuning into and connecting with what they're feeling. And the difference between the how and the what feeling is that how we're feeling is in our minds. It is the story of how we're feeling. It is the way that our mind is explaining our experience. And what we are feeling is in our bodies. It is the physiological sensations. It is our nerves. It's our nervous system. It's our energetic system. There are so many systems within our bodies, overlaid in our bodies, right? We have circulatory, lymphatic, meridian, um, energetic, you know, the chakras, you'll hear about that. Um, and, and there's the nervous system, which is a really popular discussion. Now everyone's talking about it. And all these systems are layered over top of them. And so what is the point of all these systems? What is the point of them? The point is to allow life force to flow within us. Our blood circulating, our oxygen circulating, our energy circulating. It keeps us alive. It's what helps us be vital. When it's not circulating correctly, or it's not circulating at all, that's life-threatening to us, right? And so our emotions, our energy, they work with our nervous system and our energetic system, okay? And so when we are not processing and integrating our emotions, that when we're staying in the how, when we're staying in the story and we're not in the what, and we're not in our bodies tuning into what we're experiencing, what we're feeling, then it's not flowing correctly. And it's draining our life force. If you notice that when you're negative, and I know this because I spent most of my life negative, and this is not a judgment. I'm not saying that you need to be positive. I'm not saying that you need to be negative. I'm just saying that feeling positive is a feeling of having more energy, right? You feel lighter. You feel excited. You feel lit up. You feel vibrant. You feel vital. And when you're in a negative place, and we all go through both states, But when we're in a negative place, we feel exhausted. We feel drained. We feel heavy. We feel just wiped of all of our life force energy. Why? Because that energy is not able to flow. And so taking care of our emotional health is noticing what we are feeling. What is the sensation? And are we allowing that energy to flow? I teach my clients because this is foundational. This is like the principle, main principle is to know how to connect to your body, is to know how to move that energy through you so that you can have a clearer mind. And like, again, if you notice how is very vague, it's very clouded, it's very confused, but what is very clear, it's very tangible, it's very specific. So knowing what we're feeling, knowing what emotion is showing up, Knowing what is happening in our bodies, in our nervous system, and in our energetic system. You know, everyone talks about the nervous system, which is key. It's very important. But do you know what it feels like? Have you tapped into what your nervous system feels like? The vibration that is going coursing through your body. Have you felt it? Have you noticed it? 
it really is a subtle system. You know, we can't feel our blood circulating, right? But it's doing it all the time. And we don't always notice when it stops circulating. We start getting that like cramp or you start to feel that numbness, right? When it's not circulating properly, that compression, you need like compression leggings. You, you can feel that when there's like circulatory issues, right? And we can feel when there's like nervous system dysregulation and feel when there's energetic blocks within our body because our emotions are trapped, right? There's different parts of the body that are associated with each emotion, right? But it requires us to slow down enough, get quiet enough, be mindful enough to actually notice specifically what's going on. It's taking charge of our emotional health is about diagnosing what is showing up for us in the moment, diagnosing what's going on for us, and then learning to understand and translate that into aligned action. Right. So I'll make future episodes on this and you can go back and listen to older episodes as well, where I kind of talk more about this. But our emotions are always there to their physiological energy, right, signal signals for us within our body that we we need something that we have a need. Right. That we need care. Right. We need to be cared for or we need to take care of ourselves. But we have a need. That's why the emotion is showing up. And it's connected to that energetic nervous system state. So doing practices to connect to our bodies, like getting a massage, like getting a massage in itself was not what connected me to my body, right? Because prior to that, as I mentioned, I had all this trauma, I had all these issues with it. However, learning to connect to my body as that was happening just opened me up. It really, it turned me into putty in her hands, okay? And it fully relaxed every muscle in this body. And when your body is relaxed, your mind is clear. I had so many realizations. I had so many new ideas. I had so much clarity. Would I love to get a massage every day? Sure, but there's so many other ways that you can do this. And I teach my private clients and in my upcoming membership, you'll be able to learn these things too, right? Because it's so important that we learn the ways to get into our body. So I'm just going to end the episode by giving you one little activity that you can do. So wherever you are, you could be standing, you could be sitting. The activities, the meditations and stuff that I give you are usually just, you can use them anytime, any place. They're very subtle. And this is a really great one to practice, right? So It involves breath, but it involves your shoulders. I personally hold a lot of tension in my shoulders. I know a lot of people do. What I want you to do is take an inhale and hold it for a few seconds. And then on the exhale, I want you to push your shoulders down towards the ground, right? Push them down towards the, not with your hands, just pushing them towards the ground. And I want you to take another inhale, hold for two seconds and push them towards the ground. So inhale. And as you exhale, just stretch, the, extend them towards the ground, right? So you're feeling like they're being pulled, like someone is pulling them down and feeling that pull in your shoulder and your neck, right? Feeling that tension in the back, in your upper back. As you're stretch, just keep stretching and stretching and stretching and feel the vibration in your shoulder, in your arm as it tenses, as it's pulling, as it's pulling. Okay, now relax, right? That was you connected to your body for a minute. That was you using that system that already exists, tapping. And there's a lot of different activities you can use to work with the nervous system, but that was just one small activity that you could use to connect to your body. Another thing you could do is roll your wrists, roll your wrists to the right, roll your wrists to the left, right? Great nervous system work. Focus on that wrist, like focus on the sensation in your wrist. If there's pain, if there's discomfort, if there's tension, stay focused on that. Get so focused on your body right? So the shoulders activity is great because you're just so focused on that tension stretching in your shoulders and you just release it and you just feel a little bit more calmer and a little bit more grounded and a little bit more clear. 
So the next time, as you're moving through the year, I want you to think about, you know, 2023, maybe you have health goals. I want you to think about incorporating emotional health goals, emotional wellness goals. I want you to think about really learning how to process your emotions and take care of yourself. And that starts by learning ways to connect to the body. And it starts by being able to slow down and check in and and notice the vibrations and the sensations. Notice where the pain and the discomfort is, right? Stretch, practice stretching more. I definitely need to practice stretching more. My masseuse told me I need to practice stretching more, right? Stretch. And as you're stretching, feel your body, become so present with whatever the sensation is as you are stretching or slowly moving your body. And by doing that, you're helping that energy to flow rather than get blocked. Because when we're in the mind, when we're in the story, when we're in the how, right, we are generating, generating, generating. The story is what generates that emotional energy. The emotion is responding to that because the story is preventing us from getting a need met. If you haven't watched my videos or listened to my episode on needs, I highly suggest that you do that so you know what I'm talking about. But the story is preventing us from getting that need met. So the more we engage with that story, the more emotional energy we generate, the more upset we get. And when we don't know how to tap into our body and into that internal system to regulate ourselves, it just becomes overwhelming and we shut down. And so this year, I hope that you can practice not shutting down. I hope that this year you think about what you're going to do. What action are you going to take to actually Take your emotional health seriously because it is just as, if not more so, and I would argue that it's more so important than the physical health stuff. The let's change our diet, let's do all these things. Very important. But those behaviors and actions start to come naturally to us when we're in a thriving emotional state. So I really, I really want you to reflect on that. You can return to this episode and do that activity if it helps you. Um There's more to come this year, so definitely subscribe to the podcast if you're not subscribed already. Um, I'd love to have you leave a review if you find this helpful on Spotify or wherever it is, if you find anything positive about it. I love when you guys message me and you tell me that you loved the episode or you found it amazing, but please, I would really appreciate it if you could also leave reviews and, and so when other people find it, they can, you know, they can have that validation. Um, greatly appreciate it. It helps people to find the podcast. And that's what this is all about is helping and serving. Um, So I hope this episode has served you. And I hope that it's allowed you to just look a, a little bit differently at your connection with your body and your connection with your emotions. And so what are you feeling? Right? I'm gonna leave you with that. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. It would mean so much if you could subscribe, leave a review, share with your friends and family, and let me know what you think by going to my Instagram at mighty underscore emotions and connecting with me and letting me know what you loved about today's episode. It really means a lot that you support this podcast and I love coming to you each week with a new episode. So be sure to subscribe, let me know what you think and take care of yourself.